Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press, and I'm back with another, well, this is a crazy card. <laughs> it's really like, I don't know, probably three cards in one, but I made this for my husband's birthday, and I always feel like I need to outdo myself for cards for him, because, you know, he, he sees everything I make, so I gotta make it extra for him, right? So this is one of those cards where I had an idea and I really stretched my supplies. I think I used about 10 different die sets for this. And you can see, I, I just kind of pulled from my stash. I've got everything linked below, but the whole idea of this is to just stretch yourself, see what you've got and, and take a look. For example, my pie crust is made out of a doily and rainbows and circles. <laughs> um, for the cherries, I used holly berries because that set had a bunch of bigger circles in it. Um, I used an apron box card, but I just trimmed it down to only use the apron and the uh, decorative piece of it. I also used some of the uh, utensils that are in that set, and I wanted to show you for the rolling pin, I actually had to do some partial die cutting to shrink it because I wanted to fit the Happy Bee Day sentiment on top of it, and it it was uh, too long otherwise, so a little bit of partial die cutting. Also, I, I partially die cut those rainbow pieces to extend them. Um, and then you can see I, I'm just kind of pointing out the different pieces that I use. This is the set that has the Happy Bee Day. Again, I mixed and matched. I just pulled from my stash to put all this together. For the sentiment for Sweetie Pie, I cut out three each of all of the letters so that it could have a nice stacked sentiment. And then I use this rocker card base because it's really fun. It's got steps to it. If you don't have it, don't worry. Just use a big circle, fold it in half, and you've got a rocker card. Uh, I did pull out the buffalo plaid stencil as well because I want to decorate one side of the apron. And you can see that's what I'm going to do here. I've got my little brushes. These are medium sized brushes. Um, they're not foam. They're, they're actually brushes. And these are fun because they stack on top of each other so you can take them with you. And they're great for stenciling because, you, I mean, a medium brush for stencils works perfect almost every time. And I'm just going to use some light blue ink to blend through this. And if you don't have a good plaid stencil, I'll link this one down below too, because this, this one's nice. You can use it for Christmas, you can use it for picnics, you can use it for all kinds of things. Baby boy, baby girl, it's nice and generic. So once I've got the ink through there, I'll set that aside to dry. And then I want to ink up the pieces that I cut for my pie crusts. So I've got a couple different colors of brown ink here, and I'm just gonna lightly put it all over. I do not need this to be perfect because it's supposed to look like, you know, the, the cooked edges of pie crust. And then I'm gonna use that darker brown and just put it on the inside of the rolling pin, just so that when we put the Happy Bee Day on top, it stands out a little bit more so you can read it. So that's all of the ink blending. And then to put the, the big cherry pie together, I cut out a couple of larger circles. And I found that it's easiest to add your glue, use a gem picker, and then just pick up the circles and, and put them down. Uh, I did cut them from three different colors of red. I just rated my scrap pile to see you know what I had. And then I tried to cut or put the uh, darkest red circles on top. It's the same color as the the base there so that they kind of give some variation and look kind of, you know, like depth. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue this all together now. Uh, the pie crust, the outer edges there, that's uh, doily and I cut the same size, or I'm sorry, a slightly smaller circle from the center and I just cut two layers of it and rotated it so that it kind of it just looks like pie crust, I think. Then I will go ahead and glue down my first rainbow. And I left it together so that I could keep them kind of evenly spaced apart. And then I'm going to line up the other one and I weaved them, you know, how you do pie crust, in and out, over and under. <laughs> and then I'll glue it down. And then before I trim off the, the curves at the top, I'm going to add some glue to the intersections here, and it's just easier while it's still a little bit more mobile. Then I can trim the curves, and it just so happened that um, it's still, you can see just a little bit of the curve, so the rainbow is kind of coming in on itself, and it ends up making the pie look even more dimensional, so I thought that was kind of a, a happy little accident there. And if you don't have this set, I mean, I used it because it had the wavy lines, but you could just 
either use some decorative scissors or you could just cut straight lines it doesn't matter then you can see I'm just gluing the cream colored on the back and honestly I don't think I needed that cream colored layer but I wasn't really sure how much would be visible the blue is going to be the back and it's going to be our pie crust or I'm sorry the pie tin so I'm going to cut the channel out and you see those hearts those are they just happen to be in that set which is super handy um, so that's why I'm using them you're going to need three pieces either circles squares something that is um, something that you can make the the sliding mechanism with and this is actually something I saw BB Cameron do the other day I thought it was really cool she was locking gatefold cards together and I thought wow that would be great for sliders because it's really thin there's no no depth no no foam in between or anything like that so I just used the handle of the spoon to cut out a, a track basically I want a track that my hearts can slide up and down in and then I'm going to take those two cream colored hearts, fold them in half, and then we will layer them and glue them onto the blue heart. And that's going to give us our, our sliding mechanism. So I'm just going to glue them down. I'm using PVA glue in a fine line bottle. Anything that's paper to paper, that's usually my go-to. It gives me a little bit of wiggle room. It never causes buckling or anything like that so it's my preferred glue for for paper to paper it doesn't work great for plastics and things that are non-porous so I use different glues for that which you'll see I pull out a handful of adhesives in this particular video <laughs> um, but okay so you can see I've got those two there and we open them up like wings and then it'll just slide down and then once we adhere it to our pie slice it'll allow it to slide up and down so I'll move the uh, blue circle out of the way and then I can cut my slice of pie and I'm using the hearts as a guide and I just want to cut you know a slice of pie I want to make sure that my pie is a little bit larger than the hearts and you could probably use a trimmer here but I was afraid of going too far in any one direction and then it would look funny so I'm just being careful and sliding a little bit at a time or cutting a little bit at a time so that I get a a nice slice without cutting too far into the rest of the pie and then we can adhere it to the pie but I want to make sure that everything slides correctly I want to make sure that it's lined up and it will move in a nice line up and down so I am going to line it up and make sure that the V is pointing to the bottom of the uh, the track there and just I'll, I'll test it here after I glue it down just to make sure that everything goes nice and straight we don't want it to be crooked and then it won't pull evenly so once I've got that glued together I can set it aside and we can put the rest of our pieces together you can see I've got the apron the the blue is the back layer and I just went ahead and put some ribbon through the holes and I'm taping them down if I tied knots then you know it would be bumpy underneath so tape is easy and it gets covered up anyhow. I'm covering the back with the plain white side. That's the side that I wanted to leave blank for my sentiment. And then the front is our ink blended stenciled side. So I'll glue that in place as well. And we're just prepping the pieces so that we can adhere them all together. And again, this card is kind of like over the top. You could easily break this apart into several cards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you just have an idea and you keep going with it. I'm going to layer together the small pie. You saw that I put a little piece of red cardstock. It was already glued um, in place there. Just a scrap so that it would peek through those little holes. I trimmed off the bottom or the sides of the blue there. And I only partially die cut that so I didn't even have to cut the top. And then I will cover it up with a little wavy piece for the rest of the pie crust. This is super cute, it gives it a lot of dimension. And I only had to ink blend the top of that front layer. So it looks nice, it looks baked. Now for all of my utensils, I partially die cut some blue handles. And then you can see I'm just trimming them down. The dies in this set that I used don't have separate dies for the handles, so I, I just trimmed them down. You cut it a second time and, and trim it down, no problem. And after I get them on the rolling pin, 
I'm gonna glue the Happy Bee Day on top of that one for the utensils. All you do is trim them down and, um, and glue them on. But that'll get us uh, most of these parts all done here. And then I want to show you how I did the sentiment. Now I used an upper and lower case script alphabet die set. If you're using a regular die set, um, you may want to, if, if they won't overlap nicely, you may want to glue them to a piece of acetate or something else so that they can float across. But this set is really nice because the letters are designed to look like script so they will overlap and I'm not working on a grid so I just put a piece of tape on my mat here and then use that as a straight edge so I could line everything up nicely and then where it overlaps the rolling pin I'm just gonna glue it down and I want to use that piece of tape again just just so I have that straight edge and it kind of gives me a, a guide. I can eyeball that the rolling pin will be straight across or at least parallel at this point. And then once I have that glued in place, I'm going to put the acetate in here. You can see I've got other layers that will go there as well. They'll layer up to be thick, but I want to sandwich the acetate in between. So I went ahead and cut just a little strip of this, and this is pretty sturdy. I want to say it's seven mil, um, so it, it's not like regular packaging that's floppy. This is a pretty stiff acetate. If you ever buy any of our lights, the acetate in there, that's the, the same stuff. <laughs> so I can tell you for sure that works. Um, when I adhered the little strips in place, I put the legs going straight down and at this point I realized uh, that's not going to work. They should have come in at an angle so I can put them in the step. So no problem. I'll just peel them up and then put a new little piece of adhesive on and then angle those two little acetate legs in. And that works much better now. You can see when I kind of put it in the stairs, it'll work just fine. But now I need to thicken it up because at this point it's really like one layer, um, two layers for the the rolling pin at this point, but I want that thicker as well and I want to hide the acetate. Now I did try to partially die cut the blue rolling pin to be the same length as the craft colored one, but I was off a little bit so no problem. All I'm going to do is just uh, cut off one handle and then I can trim down the one side and then when I glue them on it'll meet up nicely and this is the back side and remember the apron is going to be there um, kind of behind it anyhow so nobody's really going to see it and they certainly won't notice the seam even if they are looking at it and then to layer on the letters notice that I am spelling it out all the way across you don't want to stack up all three S's and all three W's and then try to stack them onto each other because they won't be smooth. They'll be thick at that point. And in order to make this a nice transition, nice and smooth all the way across, you want to spell out the whole the whole word one layer at a time so that it overlaps nicely between each letter. I hope that makes sense. You can see I did it again for the third one. And then I have a nice stiff sentiment here now and it's it's smooth I don't have bumps in it and I went ahead and for the P actually for that one is is loose so you can stack all three of those together <laughs> but all the other letters are transitioning nicely and I do want to share this rocker card this is all the dies actually are from iCrafter today so if you need to pick up any of those um, they're all in the same place um, the rocker card has a little decorative piece and it, the die actually cuts those folds into it for you for the steps which is really cool and then I left the decorative piece just plain white I thought about stenciling it too but I thought then it would fight with the apron and I wanted the apron to be separate and I kind of dry fit everything and I decided where the pie was going to be with the slice and I decided that I wanted the pie slice to come out on the upper left hand side so this is where I'm grabbing my um, 
Heffy Doodle Interactively Yours die set, and there is a little stamp in there that says, uh, I think it says Pull Me. Um, and at this point, this is where I'm going to stamp it onto the handle. I wasn't sure what, sh what direction the pie slice was going to come from. So if I had stamped it before, it might have been upside down if I was originally thinking it would come from the right side instead. So that's why I waited until this point. And because that is the handle that's going to be pulling that slice in and out, I stacked it up four times so it's nice and thick. So it'll be sturdy and hold up. And then we can glue it all together here. So the first thing I want to do is line up the, the pie and glue down the blue back piece. And I'm sliding it into the channel that we created in those hearts, making sure everything lines up. And then before it's dry, I'm gonna test it, make sure that it, it slides nicely as, as planned. And it does. And then now I'm gonna glue that spatula onto the back there. And because that spatula is silver paper on the front, it, it's pretty non-porous. So I'm gonna grab my Gina K Connect glue here and I'll just attach it. I could have used some of that uh, double stick tape as well, but I know that that Gina K is gonna hold up nice and strong, but it does take a, a minute to dry. So I put a block on it, let it dry. And then now we can start assembling because we have all of our pieces ready to go. I pulled out an envelope and this envelope, I want to say it's called a booklet size envelope. Basically, if you take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and fold it in half, that's the size envelope that, that it's designed for. Um, so it, it's big, it's a generous sized envelope. And I needed that for all of these gigantic pieces. <laughs> I don't know why I put so many things on this card, but I really like the way it turned out. Um, so I'm going to use that envelope kind of as a backdrop here to make sure that when I adhere everything together that it, it's still going to fit inside the envelope. And you can see me kind of holding my fingers in place as sort of a guide. Don't put glue beyond your fingers. Um, so I did that for the apron. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the pie, but I want to flip it over. It's easier to work with here. And again, just kind of using my fingers as a guide. I have a little extra glue at the top where the apron doesn't come all the way up. No big deal. I can wipe it away because this one is the PVA glue, which again, the PVA is great for paper to paper. It dries clear and matte, so you can't see it at all on the finished card. And then we can start putting the sentiment in place. So I trim down those little legs because they're a little tall. And then I'm going to just kind of dry fit. I was kind of hoping that I could slide it over more to the right side so the S wouldn't overlap the red um, of the big pie because it, it there's not as much contrast as I would have liked there. If it had just been against the crust, then it would have been easier to, to read. But then it was crooked compared to the steps, so I didn't like that either. So I decided to let it overlap a little bit. It's not a big deal. And in person, there's a lot of layers. So in person, you can see, but you know, it's one of those things. Contrast is always nice. I trimmed off the little bit of that leg that was sticking out and then to attach the small pie I want to use a little piece of foam. Notice that I'm sticking it to the card. That way I'm not accidentally gluing two steps together. If I had stuck it on the pie and then stuck the pie down, if it had overlapped a couple steps then it, it wouldn't um, work as well. So I just went ahead and attached it. I'm making sure that the rocker is balanced and also I should mention I made sure to put the apron and the pie up high enough, uh, both pies high enough, so that they wouldn't act as kickstands and make the rocker not rock. You, you want to make sure that it's balanced and you want to make sure nothing's hanging off too far down, otherwise your rocker won't go very far. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish adhering the word pie on the bottom. And then you see me adding a little bit of foam. This is thin foam. It's just going to account for the depth of the uh, rocker card there because I'm going to stick it into another step. I put glue on the handle and thin foam on the back of the spoon and the back of the whisk. And then I'll just slide those in. And the only thing left to do to this card is add some gems. I like these little red ones from HAI Supply. They're, uh, they're glass or crystal but they're really shiny, really pretty. Um, again, using the connect glue because it, 
it holds better for that. And there you can see our finished card. And I think it turned out perfect. My husband loves it. So my husband is not a cake fan. He's a pie person. That's why I made him this card for his birthday. And I, I think it turned out pretty good. I hope that this inspires you to come up with ideas that can really make personalized cards and, and just kind of think outside the box and then stretch the supplies that you have and make them work. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this or some of my other interactive card videos, I'll link to those below. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, my friends, thanks for watching.